Okay, this final episode, we're going to talk about perhaps cultural change, you know, with disability, uh, some stats as well. Um, but let's talk to start with about, um, you know, we call it Cortana, of course. Everybody knows Cortana, but really it's about a digital assistant, isn't it, Hector? So, yeah, that's, know, just, that's, that? that's how I like to see it. Yeah. Uh, so, so many people know Cortana in terms of that voice control, yes. which is extremely useful for people with physical disabilities mm. uh, and, and people who are blind, you know, just like, mm. hey, Cortana, open word. Yeah. It's just such an easy, quick way of doing it. So we've got to kind of normalize that a bit. Uh, but the thing I'm most interested in terms of Cortana is that is that assistance mm. and that implementation of AI into kind of into your workflow. So um, I don't know if you're using my analytics. Oh, yeah, yeah, I office. get it. I get it every you know right. week. Yeah. So so I now know the you know uh, the you know the emails that I really need to deal with in my inbox. I've also got my focused inbox. Yeah. That's Cortana. You know, that is the intelligence being applied yeah. to, you know, to my workflow. And then if somebody writes an email, hey Hector, send me a file at four o'clock, mm. I get that little bit of intent, you know, analyzed in my, in my email. So before I finish for the day, I can just kind of tick off those four things that somebody asked me to do. Okay. All of this is kind of is Cortana. Yes. All of this is you know, adding into kind of, you know, my assistant kind of being more useful mm. to me. Mm. In terms of the future, mm. and this is not, you know, you know, we don't know what's coming, you know, with, with Cortana. And, mm. and, you know, I get, I get to see maybe a little bit under the hood, but, sure. but there's still more to come. Yes. But I think what we're going to start to see is much more kind of automate, automation of settings for people. So, you know, if, if, if your computer sees that you're pinching and zooming on a document a lot, yes. why shouldn't it recommend to you other options to make things easier to see? Yeah. Yeah. So, so, so we're going to start to see AI kind of personalize the computer experience more and more. That's good. I think that's super exciting. That's good. As well as that, maybe that kind of that cloud concept. Mm. So, you know, true, true, true. you know, it knowing that I want those settings everywhere, yeah. you know, so when I get to my phone, you know, my Outlook on my up. phone Absolutely. knows that. So, so one of the things that's really cool with your ease of access settings now, yes. you know, your, your disability settings mm -hmm. is that you can share them across the cloud to lots yeah. of different devices yeah. so you don't have to keep setting up the device oh, uh, you, you know your particular way a lot less yeah. hassle yeah, yeah. No. so so i just think more and more assistance without asking for it yeah. you know more and more assistance that's kind of learning from the way that you use the computer, the, the way that you read documents, and adapting for you. That's how I see it. And is there, um, obviously, I mean, I think I know the answer, so I think we all know the answer to this, but just how big is that cultural change in Microsoft, you know, driving this yeah. disability development, this inclusivity, yeah. you know, it's, it's talked about, but really how big is it? What's I mean, it's why I joined. You know, I spent 20 years working in the assistive technology world, mm -hmm. You know, and it was always a niche topic, mm. lots of specialists coming into businesses to support mm. people with disabilities. It, uh, about three years ago, you could really see the change that Microsoft mm. recognized the sheer scale of this. Yeah. Now, we're talking 1.4 billion people in the world with a disability. Wow. So if technology is going to keep reaching humans, more and more humans, it's going to reach a much more diverse set of human yes. beings yes. with different needs. Yeah. And so, so Microsoft totally get it. But yeah. rather than it being a, an obligation, mm -hmm. you know, it's like we've got to legally make this stuff accessible. The beautiful thing that I've like, loved over the last couple of years is that they've made it an opportunity. Mm -hmm. You know, disability is a kind of a lens to innovation. Mm -hmm. it's, it's, you know, by having more and more representation of people with disabilities in our workforce and by empowering people with disabilities to share their experiences mm -hmm. and influence what we're doing, it's really changing us as a, as a company. And, and, it, and we're just becoming more innovative. We're changing the way that we recruit. We're changing the way that we book our holidays around people with disabilities. Mm. And we just end up with better product. Mm. So, yeah, it's a great time. Great and, time. and if you don't mind me adding to that, it's like, as, it, as so, an yeah. employer that's been in, a comp in the company for mm. slightly longer than you, so coming to seven years this December, it's like I've rediscovered myself, you know, in terms of how I can impact um, the world out there. Okay. If you don't mind me saying this, right, being honest, I can't impact the world necessarily, but I impact within my remit of work. And this is just providing me with a, a much more clearer intent in terms of how I can achieve you know, the true impact through the work I do with partners like yourselves and customers out there. Uh, because in the end, you know, when we hear Satya Nadella saying, you know, we're here to empower every individual and every organization in the planet to achieve more. Yeah. And when we hear Gabriele Schuster saying, mm. and we uh, partners are there to make more possible, mm -hmm. you know, in the nutshell, that's the message from Gabriele. I really love it. So two reasons then, right? So I changed my role into working with partners because I wanted to scale myself in terms of my expertise and keep learning. But then through that and through accessibility, it's kind of mind blowing. Right, mm -hmm. I feel in a is a complete different scene, and it's a complete different story. Uh -huh. So you can see how that gets embodied as well. It's a true story. I'm not making this up. Into somebody that's been in the company that has changed their mind, 
uh, is mine in my case, um, to, to relearn how to, you know, to deliver yes. and to the point around cloud. So when we talk Cortana, please let's remain mindful about something that's key because Cortana sits in front of Azure Cognitive Services, yes. which are there. Mm. So partners and customers, individuals can actually explore those capabilities, mm. build solutions of theirs, develop their own IP, their own capacity. Yeah. But I suspect we're going to talk partners, <laughs> right? Well, that is actually a perfect segue into what do we need to do to culturally change? What's the impact to customers, but also partners? You know, What do we need to do to get on board, guys? Yeah, so uh, if you don't mind, I'll go first here, right? Being a partner of technology strategy, so I love opportunities like these with tech quarters and other partners out there, some I'm working more closely with. Uh, but in, in fact, it's like there's, there's a lot of capabilities that we've been talking about that you would likely to go and discover a bit more from today at least um, that are there as kind of hidden gems. So we actually need to provide more of an insight in terms of what's out there Customers may have already bought these kind of products. So there's no much on top. They just need to drive their own awareness into what's out there and learn how to use them. Mm -hmm. And on the last angle would be around what's next, yeah. right? So through AI and seeing AI differently, as I like to say these days, I even put an article on that if you don't mind me saying, it's like seeing AI as adoption and inclusion but through artificial intelligence, that's the other AI, mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. to achieve it. Yeah. Because AI can actually empower and augment the human sure. being capability and help partners like yourselves to build their own IP to actually scale. Mm -hmm. yeah. So that's like, like we've been doing with our Cloud Academy. And awesome. you know, only last week Great. we created, I think, 50 accessibility videos that are going in our bot. Great. So um, and they're really quick and easy to create, but they're just going to help people. So sense of fulfillment. And help, and help a wider group than you know. Yeah. I mean, 75% of people with dyslexia in the workplace don't tell their boss. Wow. Yeah, seventy percent of disability wow. is hidden, as in you know visually see that it. Surprise. Yeah. So so the more and more these things are kind of everywhere, and partners are making these tools kind of discoverable, doing some training sessions on it, empowering their customers to learn a bit more about accessibility. You're impacting a huge number of people, and actually unlocking hidden productivity within any organisation. You know, just this morning we've been showing people how yeah. to kind of have yeah. stuff read aloud, out loud yeah. to them, and immediately like three or four people are, are saying, "Wow, I would use yeah. that." Yeah. You know, that kind of hidden productivity unlocking is amazing. Yeah. Just to come back to AI, uh, we are funding some uh, some some innovation in AI. You know, we're really ambitious about what AI can do for people with disabilities. Okay. So we have a program called AI for Accessibility, okay. which essentially allows you to kind of uh, get some Azure. Credit, yes. uh, get a, you know, get get some get a, get a grant from Microsoft yes. to go and yeah. develop amazing tools that really empower people with disabilities. Oh, right. So uh, yeah, that might be something people want to explore as well. Definitely, I think tech quarters can get involved there. It'd be great. So talking about uh, innovation and the future, what what do you see? What innovative products are coming out in the future? Do you know anything that we should all know about? <laughs> I do. <laughs> uh, we have we have an amazing. I'm sure he knows. Uh, <laughs> I'll tell you some. Uh, so so every year we have something called One Week at Microsoft, where you know nice. passionate employees can go and just hack on amazing you know new ideas. You know go and do some problem solving, uh, and a lot of that is kind of based on the the latest technologies like AI, like mm -hmm. machine learning. Sure. Uh, we've had some great success with eye tracking. Uh, and this is just a it's like 150 dollars now for a, for an eye tracker for somebody to control Windows 10 just with, oh, their, wow. with their eyes. How good is that? Yeah, yeah, that is fantastic. Honestly, you buy one of those. Yeah. Plug it into a Windows 10 device, play with it, you'll That's soon get the idea. We will be uh, playing with this later, <laughs> definitely, yes. Um, but because we've now got technology like this, as well as things like brain computer interface, you know, brain monitoring wow. for making computer interaction happen. Okay. You know, the, the hackers within Microsoft, you know, the real kind of innovators are taking these new tools, mm. matching them up with cognitive services in the cloud, and then kind of imagining what you could do. You know, if we can look at intent with the eyes, yes. if we can look at intent with the brain, and then link that to data, uh, think what's possible. So, so I mean, I, I can honestly say, my 20 years of working in AT, assistive yeah. technology, yes. we have seen all the new technologies first. Mm. So I saw touchscreens before you all had touchscreens in your pocket. Oh, wow. I was clipping them onto the front of monitors oh, in special okay. needs schools. Yes. Yeah. Uh, you know, so, so you always see that disability is a great place to go and see kind of the latest technology. Uh, but the two that I love probably the most are brain computer interface and eye tracking. I think they offer, they offer great opportunities. Superb insight, yeah. Hector. Thank you so <laughs> much for that.
Yeah, so in the end, um, all about doing tech for good, right? So there's so many different plays that we can actually achieve great things. Uh, ethics uh, should be top of mind for everybody on these things, I would say. Guys, uh, honestly, it's been an absolute pleasure. I, we could carry on all morning, but uh, I think the partners out there, the customers, I, th I hope you've enjoyed this. These guys are amazing, aren't they? And I just want to say thank you. Yeah, thanks for inviting us. Um, so much, have a Chris. great Christmas. Uh, we're off to do our secret you Santa, too. and uh, <laughs> hopefully you're going to do the same and have a great Christmas. So thank you thanks so much. much for coming to Tech Quarters. Thank you. Thank you.